Hi, Martin here. Today we're going to change out the front axle shafts on this 01 Dakota. Uh, this is actually for quite a few years of the Dakota. I believe it starts in 97 all the way up through 04. And uh, this is going to be pretty much the same for your uh, first generation Durangos as well. And I got the uh, set of new axle shafts. I just recently noticed that the axle boots were leaking and it did not take long and now i drove it just down the street here and you can hear it you can hear the click 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 of the cvs in here so they dried up and it's just my um outer boot that's leaking but uh you know we're going to replace these shafts i'm sure they're originals and uh get this thing dialed in so we need to get these changed because uh i want to drive this to work uh, tomorrow morning. So we better get busy here. All right, let's get started By the way, I got these uh, on Amazon I'll put a link in the description where you can do all your Amazon shopping through that link and that helps out the channel sure appreciate that um, And here is the part number for that item right there Now this is going to be for the ones that do not have the flange um, I'll post the years where this axle shaft works and then the earlier ones had like a uh, flange on them that you would unbolt and actually that may be simpler to replace than these they probably made these the way they are they're probably a little bit lighter and there was they're easier to install because there's less bolts to deal with you know you can you pop these on there and move on all right, let's get going here. I raised the vehicle using a hydraulic jack uh, right on the cross member of the transmission. And then I got a jack stand uh, placed real close to the control arm underneath the uh, torsion bar. As you can see right there. All right, we're going to start by removing this cotter pin here. <clears throat> Take that off of there. There's this little, uh, kind of like a spring washer that holds this tight to the cotter pin. Now this is either a 27 millimeter or a one and a quarter inch nut. I mean, either socket will work. We'll see if uh, I got this $60, well it was out of the box, $60 Harbor Freight uh, impact. If they'll take this nut off. I've already tried with my DeWalt. Uh, it wouldn't budge it. These are very tight generally. She's not budging. One and a quarter. It's ever so slightly better. Oh. <laughs> there we go. I think it was a combination of both wrenches. One loosened it up. Maybe. Alright, so we got that freed up. Now we're going to take the castle nut off of the... Uh, ball joint here. Now another thing, I'm going to go ahead and strike this, make sure that is, yep, see that? Went right in there. Okay, so we're good and freed up there. And now we're ready to remove that castle nut. All right, cotter pin. Okay, I'm using a 22 millimeter wrench right here. There we go. Okay, using a hammer, strike it right here. This should pop it loose. Right 
There we go. Okay. Using a 13 millimeter socket right here, we're gonna pull this one bolt off that secures the uh, flex line for the, the brake flex line. Give us a little bit more room. There we go. Well, it looks like I should have to replace the uh, upper ball joints as well. Look at that. The rubber shot on these. It feels, yeah, it's a little sloppy. It doesn't feel loose as far as, you know, any up and down movement. It... Here, here underneath the vehicle is the inner CV. We got a, there's a C-clip inside here that's hanging on to it. Now, if you're in the rust belt, this could be difficult to get off. But what's nice is you don't have to worry about what you're going to do to this. You can damage the hell out of it. So what you want to do is strike this with a hammer. If you can't get a good swing, you may need to use a chisel like this to get down here where you can get a swing on it. But uh, hitting it right, there's what you want to do. And pop it off that C-clip. I think it just went. Yep, I got it for sure. Yep, you see that? It's moving forward. Okay, now, if we can pull the axle out of here, perhaps, maybe, maybe not. Or we can get it off this stub shaft. Let's see here. Put the axle back into there. And now pull it there. We go. Now I should be able to pull it back out. There we go. Oh yeah. Uh, coming out through the bottom here. And we got it. Well, I'm inspecting this and there's a slight split right there in the boot where all the grease was coming out. Uh, these are the factory originals. There's the part number tag right there. Uh, and that's definitely a, a Chrysler number right there. So, uh, yeah. And as far as the ball joints, I think I'm going to wait on those because it's so easy to change those upper ball joints out. I just want to get this thing back together and uh, be back on the road. Now we're going to reinstall the shaft. Come through from the bottom. There we go. Putting it on the uh, hub first. Then I can pull back. Let's see if we can get it lined up with the stub shaft. There we go. There. I had to rotate the uh, hub a little bit. Now. Put that under there. I'm going to go ahead and spin that castle nut on. Hold everything in place. Now, what we got to do is get that um, axle shaft to go over the uh, that seat clip on the stub shaft. Just to uh, get it to uh, be locked in, secured in place. Okay, let's see if we can get this to clip onto that. There's a seat clip right there. I'm not sure you can see that or not, but it's right here. We need to get that to go on there and it'll be flush up against this surface right here right there got it all right this is how it should look when it's installed properly all the way flush up against that seal 
Okay, with the axle shaft basically installed, or at least we got it in here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that brand new nut on that they supply. Um, just going to snug it up here, and I'm going to go ahead and get the castle nut cotter pin back in uh, installed, and that uh, brake line that we disconnect this flex line right here, get that hooked back up. And then we will we'll torque this nut properly and we are getting very close. Now I did uh, put a little bit of grease on the splines of the new shaft on both, both ends. I actually put some on that stub shaft coming out of the uh, third member and then a little grease on the splines here. Okay, I'm going to return that uh, flex line bolt. Okay. Now as far as this nut goes, the torque spec for 97 through 99 is 175 foot-pounds. 2000 through 2004 is 180 foot-pounds. Not a whole lot of difference, but that is the spec. That is going to be fun getting that spec. Here we go. There we go. 180. So return the spring washer. And we got this nut here. And you got to line it up with the axle. Okay, they're over here. There we go. Place it on there to the point where you can get there we go if you bounce it around you'll find a spot where you'll be able to get the cotter pin through there everything torqued properly here. All that's left is to uh, put the uh, front tire on and torque it down, lower this vehicle. Then I still got the other side to do, but uh, I think you guys got it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and found it helpful and informative. And if you did, I sure appreciate the thumbs up. And if you've never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and a little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notified the next time I upload a video. And I'm also an Amazon affiliate, which you will find links down below in the description of products and tools we used on, in this video. And I'll give you the exact uh, link to the axle shafts that I used. I feel they're a very well-made axle shaft. I love the feel of the, the rubber on it. You know, it feels like a good quality uh, product. Uh, the, the whole thing looks really good. So I'm real happy with those. So please check that out. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Thanks again for watching.